Yeah, hello students. So today we are going to discuss some important MCQs. The first MCQ is a lady has taken medication. So lady has taken some medication for the amoebiasis infection. So as you know, amoebiasis means uh, we need to give the drugs which are used to treat the amoebic dysentery. So in a party, she drank alcohol. She has nausea, vomiting, dizziness after using the alcohol, which anti-emetic drug could have lead to the interaction with alcohol to produce these symptoms. So very simple question I would say, but very typical case and very important. As you know that uh, patient has taken the medication, but before that she has taken alcohol also. So alcohol is causing interaction with some of the medication out of the antimicrobial agents. Out of the antimicrobial agent, the medication which is causing the interaction. So in this, metronidazole is causing the interaction with alcohol. Metronidazole causing the interaction with alcohol out of the anti-amoebic drug. This is important. And as you know, this is the overall best drug, drug of choice to treat the amoebiasis. So guys, all these drugs, metronidazole used for intestinal as well as extra intestinal amoebiasis. Nitajoxanide used for this intestinal, paramomycin, diloxanide, all these drugs are used for intestinal amoebiasis. But metronidazole that is used for intestinal as well as extra intestinal both. Overall, it is the drug of choice. Overall, it is the drug of choice to treat the protozoal like amoebiasis. Secondly, it is also causing interaction with the alcohol. This interaction with alcohol is called as diacylfiram like reaction. This interaction with alcohol is called as diacylfiram like reaction. So this is important guys, the drug causing diacylfiram like reaction out of the anti-amoebic drug metronidazole causing diacylfiram like reaction. It is not in every patient. If you ask me the most common side effect of metronidazole, then I would say it is metallic taste, nausea, vomiting, bad taste. That is very common. But yes, out of the antimicrobials, it is one of the very common which is causing the disulfiram like reaction. So in disulfiram like reaction, what happens actually? Disulfiram like, it means the effect is similar to disulfiram. So disulfiram is a drug which is used as an antabuse for alcoholic patient. Antabuse for alcoholic patient, it means to decrease the abuse, to decrease the risk of abuse. So guys, this drug disulfiram, it is inhibiting the aldehyde aldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme dehydrogenase enzyme inhibition so it is inhibiting this enzyme if you will see the metabolism of alcohol in our body alcohol it is converting to acetaldehyde acetaldehyde and acetaldehyde is converting to acetic acid acetaldehyde is converting to acetic acid so ethyl alcohol converting to acetaldehyde then converting to acetic acid. This enzyme, this enzyme is alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme. This enzyme, second one is aldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme. So guys, if you give the disulfiram or the drugs which are causing disulfiram like reaction, they are inhibiting this step. So this is the second step. This is inhibited by this enzyme. So if aldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme is inhibited by any of the drug, also including the disulfiram, then you can see acetaldehyde level will increase. The aldehyde level will increase. And aldehyde is causing these reactions, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, flashing reactions because it releases the histamine. So that is the reason that the patient will have these bad reactions. And that's why it is used for end abuse purpose. So any drug causing similar reaction is called as disulfiram like reaction. The important thing is that the patient is at risk because of this reaction. Patient may have the severe hypotension, patient may go to severe tachycardia risk. That's why it is not a safe, safe thing. So because of that, we should be careful while using these type of drugs in the alcoholic patient. So whenever you prescribe metronidazole to a patient, always advise not to consume alcohol with this drug. This is important. So metronidazole, drug of choice for amoebiasis, drug of choice for giardiasis, trichomonias, also used for H. pylori infection, H. pylori infestation, right? Anaerobes, anaerobic infection. 
So not only for protozoa, you can see it is also used for bacterial infection. It is also used for helminth infestation. So it is an important drug. But simultaneously, you should be careful. In alcoholic patient, it can cause the disulfiram like reaction. But overall, most common side effect you will see is the nausea vomiting. So these are some important points we need to remember regarding the metronazole. So this is the first question. Then comes to the next. A female with 20 weeks pregnancy presents with fever and dysuria. So this patient is having fever and painful micturition. A preliminary diagnosis of cystitis was made. So preliminary diagnosis based on these symptoms, it is cystitis means infection in the bladder. So you can say the URTI, uh, this, uh, sorry, UTI, right? Then which of the following drug with, will be safe to use for this patient? So basically in this question, they are asking the drug is used for urinary tract infection. And this drug is also safe in pregnancy. So two things we need to see in this question that the drug is effective for UTI and also the drug is safe during pregnancy. So you can see now out of these drugs ciprofloxacin used for UTI, yes, it is one of the important drug for UTI. It is fluoroquinolone and fluoroquinolones are overall best drug for these type of patients. Based on the preliminary diagnosis, what you will do? First, you will start with the uh, antibiotics, but before that you will take the sample. So take the urinary sample, send the sample for culture and sensitivity and start the empirical therapy. When the report comes for culture and sensitivity, if it is sensitive, you can continue. If it is resistant, you can change the antibiotic. So guys, fluoroquinolone, ciprofloxacin, they are the one of the best drug used for empirical therapy in the UTI patients. So they are very important. Then gentamicin, these are aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides, they are also effective for these vaccinary infection. They can also be used in the UTI. Cotrimoxazole, cotrimoxazole is the combination of sulfamethoxazole plus trimethoprim. So sulfa plus trimethoprim, this combination is also good combination for UTI patient. And amoxicillin, that is the penicillin, amino penicillin. So guys, all these drugs are having role against bacillary infection. All these drugs are having very good spectrum against this type of bacteria. So we can use all these drugs. But the thing is that it should be safe in pregnancy. It should be safe in pregnancy. So guys, out of these, ciprofloxacin, not safe in pregnancy. Gentamicin, not safe in pregnancy. Cotrimoxazole, not safe in pregnancy. But amoxicillin is safe in pregnancy. So the answer would be amoxicillin. Always remember during pregnancy, during pregnancy, out of these antibiotic, during pregnancy, out of these antibiotics, beta lactams are quite safe drug. So you can say the penicillins are very good drug during pregnancy and they are safe. Cephalosporins are good and they are safe. Cephalosporins. And also guys, the important group is macrolides. Macrolides like azithromycin, clarithromycin, these are also safe. So these are the drugs out of the antimicrobials which are safe during pregnancy. So you can use these drugs without any hesitation. So in UTI patient, in UTI patient, remember, overall preferred nowadays is fluoroquinolone, but not to be used for children, not to be used during pregnancy, lactating mother. Second, if pregnancy, then definitely ampicillin, amoxicillin. If pregnancy, then ampicillin, amoxicillin, these are the overall good drug. Then if children, kids, then cotrimoxazole. Then cotrimoxazole or you can say septra. So overall best is fluoroquinolone. During pregnancy lactation, we prefer the ampicillin, amoxicillin. And in the children, we use the cotrimoxazole that is also quite safe drug. So these are the drugs which we are commonly using in the UTI patient. But yes, we can also use the other drugs. But in this question, we also need to be uh, careful regarding the pregnancy that the drug should be safe in pregnancy. So out of this, amoxicillin is safe during pregnancy. So this is again important thing. Then comes to next. A patient having weakness in the limb and it is more in the evening after work exertion. So typical history that the patient is having weakness in the limb muscles and is more in the evening time after exertion. 
एड्रोफोनियम वॉज यूज फॉर द डायग्नोसिस कंडीशन ऑफ द पेशेंट इंप्रूविंग आफ्टर गिविंग द एड्रोफोनियम दिस पेशेंट इज लाइकली टू बी सफरिंग फ्रॉम सो गाइज टिपिकल केस ऑफ माइस्थेनिया ग्रेविस यू कैन सी ऑल्सो दे हैव गिवन द हिंट ऑफ एड्रोफोनियम ड्रग यूज फॉर डायग्नोसिस एंड द कंडीशन इज इंप्रूविंग सो सपोज द पेशेंट इज हैविंग मस्कुलर वीकनेस द पेशेंट इज हैविंग मस्कुलर वीकनेस नव द ड्रग्स यूज फॉर डायग्नोसिस वी आर यूजिंग द टू टाइप ऑफ ड्रग वी आर यूजिंग द टू टाइप ऑफ ड्रग वन इज एड्रोफोनियम वन इज एड्रोफोनियम विच इज ऑल्सो कोल्ड एज टेंसीलोन सो एड्रोफोनियम और टेंसीलोन द सेकेंड इज डी ट्यूबोकुरारिन डी ट्यूबोकुरारिन नहीं फ्यूल सी दीज टू ड्रग्स दे आर अपोजिट एड्रोफोनियम दैट इज एक्टिंग ऑन निकोटनिक रिसेप्टर दैट इज न्योस्टिगमिन ग्रुप ऑफ ड्रग एन एम रिसेप्टर स्टिमुलेंट डी ट्यूबोकुरारिन दैट इज एन एम ब्लॉकर दैट इज निकोटनिक रिसेप्टर ब्लॉकर सो गाइज If the problem is due to myasthenia gravis, if suppose the patient is having myasthenia gravis, myasthenia gravis means there are antibodies against NM receptor, means weakness of muscles due to antibodies against NM receptor, autoimmune disease, NM receptor destroyed. So NM receptor functioning is decreased. If NM receptor functioning is decreased, if you will give the atrophonium, the NM receptor will stimulate and the condition will improve. The condition of the patient. the condition of the patient improves due to adrophonium but if you will give the tubocurarin that is neuromuscular blocker so definitely the condition will worsen the condition will worsen so by these two drugs you can diagnose if the condition improving that is called as ameliorative test this is called as ameliorative test for diagnosis of myasthenia gravis and in this ameliorative test the condition is improving so in this you can say the condition is improving due to adrophonium that's why it is a case of myasthenia gravis right but guys if it is cholinergic crisis if it is cholinergic crisis then what happens in cholinergic crisis it will be opposite cholinergic crisis means excess of acetylcholine so you can see if excess of acetylcholine and you give the adrophonium adrophonium is the cholinergic already excess of acetylcholine is there you give the adrophonium which is causing more excess of acetylcholine action so that's why the condition will worsen the condition will worsen but tubocurarin it's a blocker nm blocker so it will block the acetylcholine effect so the condition will improve the condition will improve so by this you can identify ki whether the patient is having myasthenia gravis or the patient is having cholinergic crisis by this you can easily diagnose if the condition is improving due to my uh, this uh, adrophonium you can say that the patient improving due to adrophonium this is a case of myasthenia gravis if the patient is improving due to d tubocurarin then it's a case of cholinergic crisis if opposite the condition is worsening due to myasthenia uh, this uh, adrophonium then it is cholinergic crisis and if the condition is improving or worsening due to d tubocurarin then improvement means cholinergic crisis and worsening means myasthenia gravis so by this table you can easily diagnose but for that you should know ki what is myasthenia gravis problem what is cholinergic crisis in myasthenia gravis acetylcholine action is decreased nm receptor destroyed in cholinergic crisis acetylcholine action more so that's why in this case the condition improves due to adrophonium it's a case of myasthenia gravis and that's why we are using the neostigmine that is same group of drug adrophonium group a child was brought to the emergency department after eating an unknown plant so it is a very common poisoning comes in the emergency now the skin is dry skin dry high body temperature so due to decrease sweating the body temperature is high pupils are dilated and raised heart rate tachycardia which of the following poisoning is occurred so guys all these symptoms you can see decreased secretions decreased sweating so increased body temperature increased body temperature pupils are dilated so midriasis midriasis raised heart rate means tachycardia palpitation if you will see all these symptoms then you can easily identify the case of this poison so guys secretions increased in acetylcholine or cholinergic decrease means anticholinergic 
बॉडी टेम्परेचर राइज बिकॉज ऑफ द डिक्रीज स्वेटिंग नो स्वेटिंग मीन्स बॉडी टेम्परेचर विल राइज मिड्रियासिस प्यूपिल डायलेटेड कोलनर्जिक कोजिंग कॉन्स्ट्रिक्शन ऑफ प्यूपिल एंटीकोलर्जिक मीन्स डायलेशन कोलनर्जिक कंट्रोल द हार्ट एंटीकोलर्जिक मीन्स टेकी कार्डिया सो ऑल दीज एक्शन आर बिकॉज ऑफ एंटीकोलिनर्जिक्स ऑल दीज एक्शन आर बिकॉज ऑफ एंटीकोलिनर्जिक्स नव यू कैन से सर वाई नॉट सिंपेथोमाइमेटिक राइट वाई नॉट सिंपेथोमाइमेटिक सो गाइज इन सिंपेथोमाइमेटिक सिक्रीशन आर नॉट डिक्रीज इन सिंपेथोमाइमेटिक सिक्रीशन आर नॉट डिक्रीज सिक्रीटरी ग्लैंड दे आर हैविंग द मस्क्रेनिक रिसेप्टर तो इन सिक्रीटरी ग्लैंड इफ मस्क्रेनिक ब्लॉक देन ओनली द सिक्रीशन विल डिक्रीज नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ द सिंपथेटिक सो दैट्स वाई इन दिस केस ऑफ चाइल्ड इटन सम अनोन प्लांट तो यू कैन सी द सिक्रीशन आर डिक्रीज मिड्रियासिस टेकी कार्डिया एंटीकोलिनर्जिक ओवरडोज इज देयर तो यू कैन से इट्स ए केस ऑफ एट्रोपिन पॉइजनिंग और बिकॉज इट इज अनोन प्लांट सो यू कैन से द बेलाडोना पॉइजनिंग और यू कैन से दतूरा पॉइजनिंग सो एट्रोपिन बेलाडोना और धतूरा पॉइजनिंग सो गाइज पोपी पोपी मीन्स ओपियम इन ओपियम देर इज पिन पॉइंट प्यूपिल इन ओपियम देर इज पिन पॉइंट प्यूपिल इन ओपियम देर इज डिक्रीज हार्ट रेट इन ओपियम देर इज मियोसिस सो नो सिम्टम इज मैचिंग विद द पोपी इन कैनाबिस टिपिकल यूफोरिया रेडनेस इन कंजेक्टाइवा सो अगेन देर इज नो सो नो पोपी सिम्टम्स नो कैनाबिस सिम्टम्स देन मशरूम मशरूम इज कोलिनर्जिक मशरूम इज हैविंग द कोलिनर्जिक सो अपोजिट धतूरा यस धतूरा इज एंटी कोलिनर्जिक and all these actions of this poisoning will be in the dhatura or belladonna poisoning what is the antidote for this poisoning the antidote for this poisoning will be phasostigmine phasostigmine is the cholinergic drug so antidote will be phasostigmine important then comes to next a farmer presenting to the emergency with garlic odor breathing pin point pupil then excessive salivary secretion drug of choice to treat this condition is so the guys farmer so whenever you see a farmer having poisoning suspect the insecticide poisoning garlic odor breathing pin point pupil so guys pin point pupil meiosis excessive salivary secretion excessive salivary secretion these two are the characteristic symptoms for cholinergic poisoning these two are the characteristic symptom for cholinergic poisoning so guys if cholinergic overdose you can see it is just opposite of anticholinergics in anticholinergics we have discussed in opposite midriasis decrease secretions so it is cholinergic overdose and farmer also giving the history of poisoning in the farmer it means insecticide or pesticide pest control garlic odor breathing so all these are typically due to organophosphate poisoning due to organophosphate poisoning so what is the drug of choice so in the treatment of organophosphate poisoning we use the two drugs one is atropin and the second is oxymes so atropin and oxymes are the two drugs atropin is the drug of choice it is the best antidote life saving drug you should repeat the atropin injection till the sign of atropinization and the first sign of atropinization is mucosal dryness so till the mucosa gets dry you continue repeating atropin but you can also use the oxymes if the patient comes early not in the late if the patient comes early then oxymes oxymes are enzyme reactivators they can reactivate the enzyme which enzyme cholinesterase enzyme so they can reactivate the cholinesterase enzyme because organophosphates act via inhibiting the cholinesterase enzyme but oxymes can reactivate it so in this case atropin is anti cholinergic and that is the drug of choice and acetylcysteine that is the antidote for paracetamol pralidoxime that is oxymes pam that can be used but that is not a drug of choice flumagenil that is used for benzodiazepine that is benzodiazepine diazepam overdose so in this case the answer would be atropin next guys one pregnant lady on lithium therapy came for antenatal visit in opd what is the risk associated with 
in this case if the fetus is exposed having by this drug so if the lady is exposed then the fetus will have this problem fallout tetralogy neural tube defect abstin anomaly and down syndrome so if you give the lithium lithium is the best drug for bipolar disorder lithium is the best drug for bipolar disorder in bipolar disorder the patient is having mania depression or hypomania and depression patient is switching but in between the patient will have the normal mood also if the bipolar disorder is given then lithium is overall best in rapid cycling bipolar disorder rapid cycling rapid cyclers means in rapid cycler bipolar disorder means the patient is having more than four more than four episodes per year and then this is called as rapid cycler so in rapid cycler guys the best is valproate the best mood stabilizer is valproate so lithium and valproate these two now lithium causing the abstin anomaly if used during pregnancy there is risk of abstin anomaly how to identify the abstin anomaly boot shaped heart sorry box shaped heart so box shaped heart that is abstin anomaly valproate that is causing neural tube defect neural tube defect spina bifida so abstin anomaly due to lithium valproate causing neural tube defect so both these drugs are not safe during pregnancy so if there is a pregnant lady then what you will do so during pregnancy these two drugs cannot be used then the best drug will be antipsychotics the best drug will be antipsychotics but even in antipsychotics we have the two type of antipsychotics so the overall best or most preferred drug during pregnancy for mania or bipolar disorder patient is atypical antipsychotics like we can use the quetiapine eripiprazole like drugs right so these are atypical antipsychotics they are used so due to lithium there is risk of abstin anomaly due to valproate there is risk of valproate causing the neural tube defect so in pregnancy the overall best drug for mood stabilizer or bipolar patients or in the maniac patients we use the atypical antipsychotics like eripiprazole quetiapine like drugs remember guys lithium is otherwise overall preferred but the problem with lithium is it is narrow therapeutic index so you need to do the monitoring plasma level it should be less than 1.2 milli equivalent per liter if the level is crossing the 1.5 or crossing the 2 it leads to lithium toxicity so right so lithium is not a very safe drug you need to be careful plasma level monitoring is required then guys an elderly patient is diagnosed with alzheimer's disease alzheimer's means senile dementia senile dementia due to his symptoms of dementia which drug is given to treat this condition so what are the drugs we are using for alzheimer's disease in alzheimer's disease guys there is a problem in the maynard nucleus in maynard nucleus we have the maynard nucleus we have the acetylcholine storage so if there is degeneration of this nucleus these neurons it decreases the acetylcholine level so what is the management in the management we need the central cholinergic drugs in management we need the central cholinergics we can also use the nmda blockers like memantine memantine is the drug which is nmda blocker so these two drugs are mainly we are using but natural like ginkgo biloba that can also be used so mainly these three drugs we are using for alzheimers the overall best is central cholinergics in central cholinergics we have the drugs like donepezil rivastigmine galantamine these are the drugs we are mainly using in the central cholinergic tecrin is not used nowadays because of the hepatotoxicity tecrin we don't prefer hepatotoxic rest of the drugs we are using but overall most or common or best is donepezil because of its longer action and less risk of hepatotoxicity but rivastigmine patches are available transdermal patch and very effective longer action due to transdermal and galantamine so all these drugs are used pyridostigmine it is not reaching to brain 
neostigmine not reaching to brain because both these are water soluble not reaching to brain so we are not using these drugs rivastigmine is the drug which is reaching to brain and it is used adrophonium is again neostigmine like drug shorter acting so pyridox uh, pyridostigmine neostigmine adrophonium they are not reaching to brain they are water soluble quaternary compound they are not effective for alzheimers so these are the drugs which are effective donepezil rivastigmine galantamine so these are the drugs which we are using for the alzheimers or dementia patients then next question one patient developed muscular rigidity and hyperthermia after giving halothin anesthetic agent which ion is responsible so when you give the halothin when you give the halothin you need to remember the three important points in the halothin h for halothin so halothin guys causing hepatitis halothin causing hepatitis halothin induced hepatitis second thing you need to remember halothin causing hyperthermia halothin causing hyperthermia and third thing halothin increase the hypersensitivity reaction of adrenaline or you can say increase the sensitivity of adrenaline so increase the adrenaline sensitivity against myocardium so you can say there will be risk of arrhythmias so these are the three important things which you need to remember in the halothin otherwise it's a safe drug good drug bronchodilator so safe in asthmatics also hyperthermia in this patient the patient is having hyperthermia so halothin induced hyperthermia why it is happening so this hyperthermia is because of the ranodin receptor stimulation in the skeleton muscle there is ranodin receptor and this ranodin receptor contains the calcium ion calcium entry causing the excessive muscle contractions shivering so that's why the patient is having high body temperature so this ion is calcium ion due to increased uh, this excessive contractions of muscles there will be heat generation and that leads to malignant hyperthermia what is the treatment for this in treatment for this we use the directly acting muscle relaxant and that is dentrolin sodium directly acting muscle relaxant that is dentrolin sodium is the drug of choice for this type of patient the dentrolin sodium also used for a similar condition malignant neuroleptic syndrome also used in the malignant neuroleptic syndrome next one drug addict person so it's a case of drug addiction presented with ulceration over the skin this patient also having itching and scratch marks over the skin he is having tachycardia hypertension midriasis so guys tachycardia is there hypertension is there and midriasis is there so you can see in all these things sympathomimetic effect is there in all these sympathomimetic tachycardia hypertension midriasis also having ulceration and scratch marks over the skin so this is a case of tactile hallucination and why tactile hallucination uh, because scratch marks over the skin means the patient is doing the scratch why because the patient think insects are crawling over the skin so if the insects are crawling over the skin that is a hallucination that is tactile hallucination cocaine bugs cocaine bugs in cocaine it is very common cocaine bugs in cocaine abusers causing the tactile hallucination cocaine is having the tactile hallucination also cocaine is the drug which is acting via increasing the noradrenaline level increase the noradrenaline means sympathomimetic effect so all these actions are sympathomimetic now in these case heroin heroin is the morphine group of drug it is decreasing the heart rate decrease the blood pressure cannabis again not causing tachycardia not causing high blood pressure lsd no tachycardia high blood pressure it is the cocaine which is causing the sympathomimetic effect out of all in lsd hallucinations are there but in lsd tactile hallucinations are not there visual hallucinations are common in the cannabis hallucinations could be there but not very common main problem in cannabis is run amok in heroin it is morphine group of drug there will be bradycardia there will be meiosis there will be pinpoint pupil right all these symptoms will be there but not sympathomimetic effect so that's why in this case it is the cocaine cocaine causing these problems sympathomimetic 
एंड टेक्टाइल हेल्यूशनेशन सो कोकेन कोकेन ऑल्सो यूज एज लोकल एनेस्थेटिक सोडियम चैनल ब्लॉकर ऑल्सो यूज एज लोकल एनेस्थेटिक नो गाइज इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन वन इंपॉर्टेंट बेस्ट ट्रीटमेंट फॉर दिस कंडीशन फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्ट टाइप ऑफ इमेज यू कैन से सो यू कैन सी द वेसाइकल्स मोस्टली यू विल सी दीज वेसाइकल्स दे विल राइट की दीज आर पेनफुल सो पेनफुल वेसाइकल्स ऑलवेज रिमेंबर हर पीज पेनफुल वेसाइकल्स हर पीज इन्फेक्शन इन दिस यू कैन सी इन्वॉल्विंग दिस डरमेटोम सो दैट इज टिपिकली हर पीज जोस्टर राइट इन ऑल ओवर द बॉडी यू कैन हैव द वेरी सेला जोस्टर चिकन पॉक्स हर पीज सिंप्लेक्स ओवर द लेबियल्स आईज क्रेटाइटिस हर पीज क्रेटाइटिस हर पीज टाइप टू दैट इज कोजिंग द जेनाइटल्स सो हर पीज इज वेरी कॉमन लेबियल्स जेनाइटल्स जोस्टर सो इन दिस केस इन ऑल दीज हर पीज इन्फेक्शन द ओवरऑल बेस्ट ड्रग इज ए साइक्लोविर ओवरऑल बेस्ट ड्रग इज ए साइक्लोविर बट इन साइटोमेगेलो वायरस इन साइटोमेगेलो वायरस वी यूज द गिन साइक्लोविर सो इन ऑल वी यूज द ए साइक्लोविर बट इन साइटोमेगेलो वायरस वी यूज द गिन साइक्लोविर बट गाइज बिकॉज देर ओवरऑल बायो अवेलेबिलिटी इज लो दैट्स वाई वी यूज द वेल वेल ए साइक्लोविर वेल गेन साइक्लोविर इट इज हैविंग द बेटर ओवरऑल बायो अवेलेबिलिटी इट्स अ प्रो ड्रग एस्टर ग्रुप एस्टर प्रो ड्रग विद बेटर ओवरऑल बायो अवेलेबिलिटी सो वेल ए साइक्लोविर यू कैन सी वेल गेन साइक्लोविर सो इन दिस केस वी आर यूजिंग द ए साइक्लोविर और वेला साइक्लोविर फॉर this patient mupirocin is antibacterial that is used for mrsa staphorias tenofovir that is anti hiv gencyclovir is cytomegalovirus and velacyclovir is for the chickenpox herpes zoster and all so this is about the herpes infection so that's all for this thank you